The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and with his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when Jesus heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, my daughter has just died. But come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. For she said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house, he saw the flute players in the crowd making a commotion. He said, go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. So, you know, sometimes I read stories in the Gospels like today's, and I wonder to myself, what were these people thinking? I mean, really, what were they thinking? Their logic it makes no sense. First, there is this father who barges into dinner, clearly and appropriately distraught over his daughter. I can understand why he would do that. But then he says to Jesus, my daughter has just died. But hey, just come and lay your hand on her and she will live. Why would he think Jesus could raise the dead? I mean, we've heard of these stories before, but he hadn't. Before this story, Jesus has cured lots of people of diseases, and he's cast out demons, and he's forgiven sins. But he has never raised anybody from the dead. And, spoiler alert, this is the one and only time that Jesus raises anybody from the dead in Matthew's Gospel. And in Mark's version of the story, the daughter is sick, but as Jesus is going to help her, she dies. Yet as Matthew remembers the story, the daughter is already dead before the father goes for help. Yet somehow he thinks that Jesus merely needs to lay his hand on the daughter and she'll be raised from the dead. He has no real reason to think that. His logic makes no sense. What was he thinking? And then, on the way, there is this woman who has been sick for 12 years. And she says to herself, all I gotta do is touch the fringe of his cloak and I will be healed. But why would she think that? Because Jesus had cured all kinds of diseases before, but never because anybody touched his cloak. And spoiler alert, there's nothing in the Bible that says if you touch the cloak of a holy person, then all of your problems will go away. Like the dad, her logic makes no sense. What was she thinking? And honestly, I, I don't know what they were thinking, and their logic really didn't make any sense. If it had, everyone from there on out would figure that they could just run up and touch Jesus' cloak and be cured of all their diseases, and everybody would figure that they could just ask Jesus to lay his hand on any random dead person, and they would be raised. But as far as we can tell from Matthew's story, those things never happened again. And that's because it was not their logic that made things better. It was their faith. Indeed, this is what Jesus tells the woman when he turns around and speaks to her. He says, your faith has made you well. It was not the cloak of Jesus. It wasn't the logic of figuring out how you could secretly tap into the power of God. It wasn't even the touch of the cloak or even the hand of Jesus per se. It was faith. And it's important to realize that faith is not believing in magic touches. Faith is not suspending logic and believing that God will do whatever you really, really want as long as you believe hard enough. Instead, faith is the trust 
that God not only can help you, but will help you. And while I don't know exactly what these two were thinking, it is clear that they had both heard about Jesus. And they had come to realize that Jesus was the agent of God's help and power in the world around them. And because of the stories of the character of Jesus and of others being helped by Jesus, they believed that Jesus not only could help them, but would help them. And so even if their logic was flawed, they both approached Jesus with the confidence that through Jesus, God could and would help them. They were not alone in their grief or their sickness. And because of what they knew about Jesus, they were sure that God was not going to forget about them either. God wasn't going to walk away from them. That was what faith was about. And it was because of that kind of faith, the trust that God could and would help them through Jesus, that both of these people approached Jesus and asked for help, instead of simply staying home and wishing things were different for them. I mean, lots of times we say, and it's true, sometimes the difference between getting help and not getting help is that you bothered to ask. And these two could have sat home and said, it's too bad I wasn't those other people. It's too bad I wasn't where those other people were. Oh, well, they get up and they ask because they are absolutely certain that somehow Jesus is going to help them. The faith of these two was about being open to Jesus' help, even if it had come differently than they might have expected it. I mean, the woman decides, all I got to do is reach up and grab the cloak of Jesus. But when Jesus turns around, he says to her, no, it really wasn't that you touched my cloak. It was your faith. That's what made you well. She was helped by her faith. It wasn't what she expected. And she didn't care because Jesus helped her just as she expected. And when Jesus and the dad return to the home, Jesus says to the crowds, hey, the daughter's just sleeping. She's not really dead. And they laugh at him. And Jesus goes in, and the daughter is raised. And maybe the dad thought, hey, everybody's going to think that Jesus raised these, the, my daughter from the dead. But the reports that spread probably said the child was just sick. That's what, you know, and sleeping, that's what Jesus said. And, and so it didn't turn out exactly the way the dad thought it was going to be. But the dad didn't care because Jesus helped him just as he was certain Jesus would. Jesus' help came in a way that they didn't expect. And faith for both of these people most importantly meant that the two of them were able to become part of the story of Jesus that helped others to trust that Jesus could and would help them too. See, what happened for these two was that they heard about the stories of other people. They heard how God had acted faithfully in their lives. And because of this, they trusted Jesus. And now because of their stories, other people would too. And this is why Matthew wrote these stories down for us, so that through their stories, we can have faith and hope as well. Because that's really what faith is about for us too. Faith is not about trying really hard to convince yourself that something you want is true. And it's not about getting the logic correct or even suspending logic, which is what I hear people sometimes say faith is about. Instead, faith is about growing in confidence and trust that God can and will be there for you and that God will help you. And that kind of faith requires time and nurture. And it's why whenever we have a baptism, we ask parents and godparents to promise to do things like live with their children among God's faithful people. Bring them to the Word and the Holy Supper. Nurture them in prayer and in their own faith so that they can continue to grow in this faith relationship with Jesus. And those are not things that we just ask parents to do because honestly, we think you guys need more stuff to do. In fact, this is how all of us nurture faith all of the time, opening ourselves up to God's presence and the stories of God acting in the lives of others, not only in the Bible, but in the neighbors around us. For like these two folks in today's gospel reading, Faith isn't about getting the logic right or believing some set of ideas. Instead, the point of faith is for each of us to be able to so trust in Jesus' willingness and ability to help us that we're open to asking for God's help instead of just hoping that things get better or trying to figure out stuff 
by ourselves. That is, we don't add to our problems by making ourselves more and more isolated. By, for example, you know, staying away from God and from God's people, from the Word of God, from the Holy Supper. Over the years, I, you know, I, I hear from people who go, you know, I'm, I'm just feeling distant from God. I'm feeling like God's not around. God's not there for me. You know, when I feel better, when I feel more like God is close to me, that's maybe when I'll go back to church. That's maybe when I'll try to read the Bible some more. That's maybe when I'll talk to my Christian friends because I won't be such a downer. You know? but, but it's in doing these things that we nurture the presence and the hope that we have in Jesus. And that's the point of faith, that, that not that we have some set of ideas in our head, but that we continually nurture that relationship. For us, too, Faith is about the willingness and, and the openness to be able to accept that God helps us sometimes in ways that we do not expect. I mean, the wrong message to get from this gospel reading is that somehow or other I can figure out some magic way for God to help me, and I know I'm going to buy a lottery ticket, and I, if I just take it and touch it to my Bible, then Jesus will make those numbers win. I mean... Jesus can do whatever he wants, but I do not recommend that as a course of action. That is not the point of this gospel reading. The point of this gospel reading is that somehow Jesus will help me, and Jesus will help you. And sometimes that happens in ways that I do not expect, and that, frankly, I didn't want because it makes my life more complicated. But in fact, what those folks in the Bible figured out, and what each of us sometimes figure out in our own lives, is that when we're praying and looking for God's help, it sometimes comes in unexpected ways but the help does come. That is what faith is about. And faith, for us too, is most importantly about becoming part of the story that helps others to trust in God's love and in God's help. I mean, in the end, this point of asking parents and godparents to make these promises, we're gonna ask them to make in a few minutes, and the reason that we do this in the context of the whole congregation and we ask everybody in the congregation to be willing to be folks who pray for and support all of them in their, in their, in their uh, vocation of, of helping their children is that each one of us as a baptized person is supposed to be somebody whose story can help others to experience the hope and the love of God so that others can grow in faith just as these two in the Bible did. Each one of us is supposed to be part of the story of Jesus in the world today so that through our experiences, others can know and trust that God's love and God's help is for them as well. For folks in the Bible and for us, faith is not something that gives us whatever we want whenever we want it. Instead, faith is a relationship of trust with Jesus that should continue to grow in, that we should continue to grow in and nurture each and every day. For it's the relationship of faith that gives us the courage and the hope to know that we are not alone in our problems and to seek for and ask for God's help. It's the relationship of faith that opens us up to seeing and living into God's help even when it's not coming in the way we expected. And it's the relationship of faith that makes us agents of God's hope and healing in the lives of others. And that happens when we become part of the story that empowers others around us to trust and experience the presence of God and God's love in our lives.